Welcome back. You're watching Newsnight on ENCA. To this now, they say education is the key to success. And 26-year-old Nomtle Nguenya, Dr. Nomtle Nguenya, that is, is a living proof of just that. Nguenya made history when she graduated with a PhD in science from the Wits University last year at the age of only 25. She is the youngest and first black female to do so. And for more on this milestone achievement, she joins us now live in studio. Dr. Nguenya, welcome to Newsnight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Abigail, for having me. It's my absolute pleasure. Firstly, mm -hmm. I know it's been some time, but I think sure. congratulations are in order. What an amazing um, academic milestone. How did you feel Thank when you. you achieved this? So sure, um, it's definitely one of the biggest milestones that I think I will always reflect on in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and truly humbled, I think, to be the youngest um, and the first black uh, female uh, to have graduated with a PhD in science. So truly, truly a humbling moment for me. Amazing. And, and did you always know that you wanted to achieve something like this? Was it a focus for you to achieve something magnificent in, mm -hmm. this, in the field of academics? Sure, 100%. I mean, I remember just even right back from primary school, um, you know, my interest in sort of, um, in my specific field, I did a PhD in geography, yeah. um, you know, sparked from primary school up until high school, up until university. I've always really known that there's always, there's a bigger part that I want to play in this world, mm -hmm. whether it be research, whether it be corporate, um, but definitely I've always known that there is something of value that I would love to, you know, give back to society and to the world. I love that. I love that you are so focused and you seem to know exactly what you want. So many young people finish matric and mm -hmm. then have no direction. They don't know which field of study they would like to go into. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't even know if they'd like to study. That mm -hmm. is a, a decision that a lot of young people struggle with. But you seem so determined and focused and n you knew exactly what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Why geography? Mm -hmm. Was there always a specific interest in mm -hmm. that specific mm -hmm. field? So 100%, I think definitely. Uh, geography is one of the most, um, I think, subjects that has such a interdisciplinary um, you know, overview. Uh, geography doesn't just touch on the physical sciences or environmental sciences in this regard. It also touches on the social sciences, so the humanities. Mm. Um, you know, it touches on you know economic geography, transportation, and I think it's one of the very, very few subjects that's actually offered at an educational level that is very broad and very interdisciplinary. Um, and I think just going back to your question, um, you know, um, you know, there's been a lot of support structure, and I think the reason why a lot of young people, you know, struggle to find really what it is they want is because of the lack of educational support that they get. 100%. You know, I, you know, was very privileged in that I had parents who took me to some of the best schools where I got the best foundation um, that leveraged me to really um, hone in on some of my passions and my strengths. Um, so as much as I chose geography as a subject that I had interest in, but it was really, a, you know, exposure that I had from a very, very young age. Mm. It really is two milestones in one because you've you've reached your PhD at such a young age, but you're also the first uh, black woman uh, in the history of the University of Wits to um, jump straight from honors to PhD. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people weren't even aware that mm -hmm. something like that was possible. Mm -hmm. um, how? How did you do it? How did you achieve something so so amazing? Sure. So I also didn't know that such a program exists, mm. right? Um, but it was during my honours year and I had a very strong I think passion for my research. So at that time, I was researching, um, you know, public engagement and stakeholder engagement around um, carbon capture and storage technology, uh, which was funded by the South African National Energy Development Institute as well as the National Research Foundation. And really looking at how do we engage um, and ensure active participation with communities where low carbon technologies are going to be implemented. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I had the most amazing time of my life. It was such a, a topic that I was very passionate about, um, to which I then achieved summa cum laude. And my supervisor felt that it was best that then I then enroll into a PhD program. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how it happened. But let's just talk about the standard of your research mm -hmm. and the, the, the standard of excellence that it needed to, to hit on for mm -hmm. you to be able to achieve this. 
this like let's let's just zoom in on mm -hmm. on the magnitude of your research and the and what went into mm -hmm. making sure that you deliver mm -hmm. um, at that level mm -hmm. and that magnitude mm -hmm. I think firstly all credit actually goes to my uh, wonderful uh, supervisor professor Mulala Danny Simatella who is renowned in his field and I think just the support that he gave me from a supervisor level mm. um, you know a lot of people don't understand that postgraduate studies really require a lot from you from your research conceptualization all the way to your data collection just the entire research process is really an in-depth process and you really need a supervisor who, who knows what he's doing and is able to support you yeah. but again not only just having academic support but having strong support um, you know whether it's from friends whether it's from family to be able to embark on such yeah and what was the reaction from mm. from your friends and your family no, I think everyone till this day was very very excited and I think super proud yeah um, you know and as they say it takes a village to raise a child 100%. you know and I completely understand that this achievement is not just mine um, but I shared with so many other people and with my family and my, with my friends as well yeah let's just expand then on the importance of that support that mm. you've just mentioned from family from friends but also from your supervisor mm. um, that is something that a lot of people won't necessarily think about mm. when planning to study further let's mm -hmm. just expand on that importance mm -hmm. It's very important because, um, you know, I think just the entire research process really requires a lot from you. And it can be emotionally taxing as well, mm. you know. I think we live in such a world where, you know, issues such as mental health is, is, is such a very, very strong component. Um, you know, even from a PhD level, you know, you have a lot of students who are facing um, either depression or anxiety because of the magnitude of the research that is required. And so having a support, strong support structure is very important. But also, I think, enabling platforms where there are mentorship opportunities, right? Mm. So if there is, um, you know, supervisors who've walked the journey who not only are able to supervise you, but able to mentor you throughout the academic process. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think support on an academic level again, but also on a, on a personal level, mm. um, you know, to fulfill and to achieve the magnitude of the studies. Amazing. So a lot of young people are, are so eager to just finish their studies and mm. get into the workspace, mm. find a job, settle down. Um, but you actually encourage undergraduates to, to study further. Why is that? Correct. I think there are so many research gaps um, that we are not um, fulfilling and identifying. For example, with my PhD, I was looking at how um, it had a strong climate finance theme, and I was looking at how green bonds um, could potentially finance the low carbon transition in South Africa. Now, when I embarked on this research topic, there was literally no research. So from an organizational level, yes, there's data that you can extract, but there's no one writing about this. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Myself and my supervisor, one of the very few African academics who, you know, publish papers looking at the green bond market in Africa, and and this comes, this is very very important as this comes in the wake of, um, you know, recently Ramaphosa, President Ramaphosa recently attended um, the new global financing pact, which highlights how climate financing is very very important. We need innovative financing mechanisms to finance the low carbon transition. Mm -hmm. For example, COP26 mentioned how the just transition would need about 8.6 billion dollars and in the new global financing pact president Ramaphosa actually mentioned that we need about 98 billion dollars so it's actually more than we need and innovative finance financing mechanisms through green bond markets through different you know the capital markets is very very important in order for us to finance the just transition um, so the mix of financing and the mix of climate science um, was a very very core components um, mm -hmm. of my PhD you know, it's so refreshing to see a young voice and a young female voice, a young black female voice at that, um, speaking so passionately uh, about climate change, about science, about the earth and, and the way that we need to, to move forward. How would you inspire other young people mm -hmm. to join the path and, and join the journey mm -hmm. and, and, and speak up and have a voice mm -hmm. like you are doing? Thank you so much, Abigail. I think very importantly, it's so important to embark on what you are passionate about. Yes. I think there's so much external pressures um, of, oh, you need to be a doctor, or oh, you need to be an engineer, um, but that's not really what you want. It's so important to listen to, to what it is that interests you. Um, and also, it's very important to also research as to 
how are your passions and your research linked to how the future world is going to look like? So I knew that geography was going to lead me to climate change, yeah. which eventually led me to climate finance, right? Um, so if you are interested in technology, how are you then going to integrate either artificial intelligence or cyber technology to make it relevant for the fourth industrial revolution? So link your passions to how the future world is going to be Great like. advice. Just quickly, what's, what does the future hold for you? What are you, what are you planning? Uh, what are you uh, making sure that you're going to be doing in the in the future. What, what what's the Thank plans? Thank you. I definitely would love to still embark in an academia, um, but also I think there's a huge gap for for climate finance consulting for corporates for organisations. Interesting. Um, so definitely venturing into entrepreneurship um, to provide these um, you know this key skill um, for organisations to climate proof um, you know their businesses um, you know in a rapidly changing world. Amazing, Dr. Nguenya. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you for inspiring. You us thank you for being, for being a young voice that's that's you know taking up space uh, we love that and congratulations once again all the best thank you very much I really My appreciate it pleasure that mm. was dr. Nomtle Nguenya she is the first black female to graduate with a PhD in science at Wits University such a refreshing young voice it is still uh, youth month so I love to uh, have these sort of conversations so really enjoyed my chat with her